Good morning folks, this is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today I'm on a paddock that we're going to be actually bringing our sheep into. I just wanted to show you, we haven't grazed this this spring yet. And it is April 20th, I believe. <clears throat> you notice I didn't say March 20th. I'm always a month behind my dates, but it's April 20th. And uh, the sheep will be here at the end of the month. This is where we're going to start lambing and uh probably have an early one or two that lambs on the other side of the road but the majority of our lamb is going to be done in these paddocks here, or this particular paddock it's a big one it's about 20 acres <clears throat> it covers a, a bottom there's their water source that pond and uh it's just absolutely gorgeous forage uh the the, clo the orchard grass is actually just coming out of boot stage. Look at that. That's called boot. It's, it was a boot, and now it's actually uh, showing its showing its seed head. Uh, that plant, it's not gonna. There's the actual boot right here. You can see it. The fescue, <clears throat> it's probably oh two weeks behind the orchard grass on putting out seed, but it'll be here before you know it. But before I walk down here in the rest of this paddock, I had to share this story with you. And this is a, a true story. It was uh, particularly right here. So I had a young guy, and, and Brent, if you're watching this, I won't use your last name, but Brent was awesome. He was a young man that used to work for us, a local kid, and just an unbelievable kid. And he's done well, Bruce. Uh, he's gone on. He's married, has a couple kids, and Brent. Uh, he, uh, his parents, Jim and Lois, are just super awesome people too. I think that's why Brent turned out so good too. But Brent was working for us, and uh, we were over here building fence, and Brent <laughs> grabbed a hold of this barbed wire fence right here. So he was stepping over it, and he had both hands on that barbed wire. And of course, there's a barbed wire. It's tied to steel posts all the way up through here. There's, that's a wooden one there, but there's probably 20 steel posts in here. There's one. And uh, when he stepped over that, this is in the spring of the year, he stepped down onto that. We have a two wire offset fence there for the sheep against that old, uh, the old barbed wire fence. And this is no joke. I was clear down there at that pond. And I heard something that sounded like somebody shot a 22 rifle. It went ker pow! And I heard, I kind of looked at the same time, and Brent was in his prime. He was probably 16. He went flying up in the air, just like he was on a pogo stick, straight up, and let out a scream, and he landed right here on his back. And uh, Jan was on the other side of the fence over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what What happened? And Brent jumped up and he threw his uh, blue jeans down. <laughs> He's looking at his leg. And I'm like, Brent, Jan's on the side. Jan's on the other side. He said, I don't care. He said, I got to look at my leg. <laughs> he, he had a burn mark. He had a red burn mark on the side of his leg from touching that fence right there. And that's a 36 joule stafix. Probably had about 10,000 volts in it. And when he had his hands on that barbed wire, man, you talk about a ground. He was grounded. And then he laid his leg right on that wire. And it was a morning, so it was dewy. You know, it was wet. Plenty of ground. And it just knocked him in. I've never heard that loud a pop before. And it did. It burned him through his pant legs on his skin. And after that, uh, Brent was really careful about getting across this particular fence and i don't blame him i know it had to just absolutely knock him into next week but um i still remember that and i know brent he he'll probably remember that the rest of his adult life it was quite a deal but had to share that little story with you and i just love uh reminiscing old stories it didn't hurt anybody it, it hurt brent for a little while but he got over it and he was young I'm sure it gave him memories that he, that he can tell his kids today. 
don't touch the fence. <laughs> Especially when you're holding on to a barbed bar wire fence. So this is our pond. This is one that I had built years ago. Um, we're on Jane's farm and uh, let's see, I think that was in 2003 or four. So it's, it's an older pond, it's stocked. It's got bass and bluegill and channel cat in it. And last uh, fall I had Johnny come in here because we do bring the cattle through here. And I, it's such a nice pond, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let cattle get in that pond. And we were drinking along the edges of it and you know, in a rainstorm, they'd kind of beat it up a little bit. And so I did this. I uh, I had Johnny come in here. And uh, we've got uh, 26 ton of rock right here. So we put in the, you know, the 6 inch. Went down first, which you can't even see it. It's underneath that 2 inch. But um, put in a nice skirt right here. And it goes way out in there. It's... I don't know, it's probably eight feet. Now this pond was down pretty good. It's all filled back up again, compliments of the spring rains, but when Johnny put this in, it was probably down two foot. But I mean, this pond is full. It's going out the spillway over there on the other side. But I got a good rock ramp. We came in here and seeded it. And uh, I put down the hay. And before the end of the summer, this will all be growing pretty decent grass in here. And, uh, you know, anytime you disturb dirt, folks, you need to put some hay on it or it's going to wash. But this is a nice angle going into that pond. Uh, we don't have the uh, PVC skirts on there yet. Um, we will put a wire around that. We've been doing that, just using them like that, putting a wire. And where they can't, they can stand there on the rock and drink, but they can't physically lounge around and lay down, you know poop and pee all day long in the pond and the biggest thing is when you got 300 and well we had 370 head in here last summer and uh when you put that many cattle on a steep bank folks uh they're like bulldozers they can really take a pond out quick if you got two or three head it's not a big deal but uh, when you got a big herd it's like a dozer they, they can really impact an area Man, oh man, I just can't believe this. This, this is the farm that the uh, the guy that had manage of uh, before me, he didn't run livestock, he just gave the hay away. And uh, he would mow the hay off, <clears throat> have a guy come in, he just gave it away, gave the hay away. And then he would come in and burn it. It was all broom sedge. And boy, I mean, he had a heck of a fire in here. That broom sedge burns like diesel fuel. It really does. It burns hot. And he killed the soil. <clears throat> so there wasn't any litter left after burning it. And uh, the broom sedge thrived in that environment. So if you got broom sedge and you burn it, it is a warm season plant. It likes burning. You're going to promote more broom sedge. So burning is not the answer for broom sedge. If you like bare ground and more broom sedge, burn it. You'll get that. If you want to make a living on the land, I recommend putting animals on it, unrolling hay on it. Or if you have the money, maybe put a little lime on it to get your pH up and you'll be growing clover. This is a poor farm. And now it's gorgeous. Look at that. I mean, man. I just sit here all day and look at this beautiful grass. I know when the sheep come in here, they're going to be some pretty happy campers. I would be. Anyway, uh, we've got a good water source. We've got really beautiful forage waiting on them. And uh, we just got to get the sheep over here. We've got, uh, well, we got two more paddocks over there and we'll be here. So today will be the second day that are on that paddock. Yeah, so they'll be here in about uh, probably eight days. Eight to, t eight to nine days. But, uh, yeah. Even though we got a killing frost uh, last night, 20, 27 degrees, the grass took it. And now the sun's up. It's supposed to get up in the 50s today, and I don't think we're going to see any more snow. We had snow <clears throat> uh, yesterday, and 
Never seen snow this late in April, but it did, it snowed. And that's the way it is on the farm. You're always getting things thrown at you that you never saw before. <laughs> so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off here. Uh, you all new to the channel, hit that subscribe button on the way out and that like button, and uh, we'll see you down the road.